what your goodness does. Sing all things. You make all things.
Yeah. 
search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty place And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And pulled me back together Is now satisfied here in love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you.
Hey church, welcome today. It's so good to have you with us this Sunday. And from wherever you're watching, a great big shout out to you. A shout out to all of our locations. Shout out to our Fiji location, our Auckland or our New Zealand location. A big shout out to our Sydney location. We're praying for you as, as we are praying for our Fiji locations. And, and we're standing in faith with you. And I pray that this word today is of encouragement to you. A shout out to all of our locations here in uh, Southeast East Queensland. A shout out to our online campus. And wherever you are watching from in the world, a great big welcome to Forward Church. And church, I want to thank you for being the most amazing church. You are an incredible company of people. And every week we see people just uh, logging into our services uh, from all over the world. Loads and loads of new people are reaching out to us. So I want to thank you, church for being the hands and feet of Christ and by spreading the word. In fact, one of the greatest things even you could do right now is to take this, uh, this feed wherever you're watching and whatever platform you're watching it on and share it and get it far and wide so that we can see as many people discover the life-giving message that is Jesus, that there is hope in Jesus. So I want to encourage you and thank you so much for doing that. You are absolutely amazing. And the way you look after each other, the way you care for one another, honestly, is just breathtaking. As the pastor of this church, Rattini and I, we're so proud of you all. And you're just absolutely an amazing company of believers. Today, we're going to continue our series entitled Stronger. Somebody shout stronger today. The Bible says, you're doing so good, by the way. The Bible says to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And I believe that this word that I've been sharing over these last couple of weeks is a now word for our church. It's a now word for you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, whether things are on the up or whether things are on the down, I want to encourage you that this word is for you. And if you believe that this word is for you, give me some hands up emojis. Let me know wherever you are. And in fact, write the, write, write the, write the, the place or the nation Wherever you're watching this from, write it right now in the comments. And I'd love to love to see there. I'd love to, love to know where you're watching from. And we want to make sure that we can do everything we can to be a blessing to you. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, chapter 37 and verse 23. Psalms, chapter 37 and verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I love verse 25. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaking, forsaken or nor his descendants being bred. He is ever merciful and lends and his descendants are blessed. Let me read verse 23 again. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. When I was very, very young, uh, we, we grew up in a Christian home and uh, my grandfather was a uh, Cook Island Presbyterian minister. And so we grew up in a very Christian home and we went to church every Sunday. We always had people around the house singing and there was always a, a morning devotion and an evening devotion. We were raised in that kind of environment. And then when I became a teenager, my mom uh, then basically gave me a choice. She said, listen, you're old enough now and you can choose whether you go to church or not. Uh, and, and I just made a decision. No, I'm not going to go to church. No, thank you. I don't want to go to church. Church is boring and I don't want to go to that place. I'd rather go and do my own thing. So when I, when I was a teenager, my mom, uh, she, you know, she gave me that uh, opportunity to basically do what I wanted. So I just basically walked away from the church. And uh, again, I'd grown up in church. I'd learned scriptures. Um, but and, and I knew of God, but I couldn't say at that point that I knew God. And so I walked away from church and began to just kind of, you know, live life, whatever that means. And, and, you know, pursue the things that everybody else was pursuing and pursuing career and uh, relationships and fun, you know, fun. And just, just really living life on my own terms. And as I began to live that life, I began, began to become disillusioned. And even, you could say, discouraged. Uh, life wasn't going the way I expected it to go. And, and, and I found myself discouraged. And I, I discovered something, something about discouragement. That discouragement is a secret thing. Discouragement is not something that people wear 
on a on a you know on a on a on a label or they they don't wear it on some sign. But discouragement is a secret thing. I remember growing up and people would ask me how I am and and I'd smile and I'd say I'm fine. But they didn't know that inside the heart of this young man was a discouraged and disillusioned young man. And if I'm honest, I probably carried that with me for some time. I just kind of walked around and just lost a sense of or in fact never had a sense of purpose. It's a disheartening thing when you're told to follow the things that other people have and do the things that other people do only to find yourself dissatisfied. And I found myself in that place of dissatisfaction, loss. And and it was during those moments that I began to think about this God that I'd heard about as a kid that, you know, maybe there was something in this. And I, I went, I remember meeting a girl and and that girl began to speak to me about Jesus. And, and, and then I found myself in a local church and, and the pastor preached and he offered everybody an opportunity to give their lives to Jesus, just like I will at the end of this message. And as he did that, I lifted my hand. I said, I don't I totally understand what you're saying, but I feel like something's missing. And I feel like that what I'm missing, that, that, that you're speaking about it right now as he was speaking about the love of God. And as I lifted my hand, I felt, I felt love fill my heart. I felt peace like I'd never known. And then over the course of the next day or so, I began to open up the Bible. And, and He gave me this passage of Scripture to read. And that passage of Scripture was this passage of Scripture in the book of Psalms chapter 37. And it simply said, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. See, if there was one thing at that point in time, and even still now, if there was one thing that I definitely was not, I was not a good man. I did not walk with God, and I didn't, didn't do what God was you know, teaching me to do, and I knew that I should be doing different things, and I knew I should be making you know, different decisions, but I wasn't. I just kind of wanted to go and do my own thing. But then as I read this passage of Scripture, I remember saying to God, God, but I'm not a good man. And I felt the, the word of encouragement come to me, just like I feel the word of encouragement coming to people right now. If Christ is in your life, then my friend, no matter what you were, you're not that anymore. From now on, you are a forgiven man. From now on, you are a righteous man. From now on, you are a good man. And if I'm honest, it probably took me years to really understand that. It took me years to really get a revelation of the fact that if Christ is alive in me, then I can be, and I am by faith, a good man. And I need somebody right now to, watching to hear me today, that if Christ is alive in your life, you are a good person. You are a righteous person. You are forgiven. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. You are more than an overcomer. And you are not that because of you. You are not that in your own strength. You are that because of what Christ did 2,000 years ago. Because Christ died for you, my friend. No matter, no matter what you've done and no matter where you've been, you are a good man. And as I sat there thinking about this fact that, 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 that Lord, you've forgiven me, I then began to understand that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I then began to understand that in the middle of my chaos, God had a plan. That in the middle of my wandering, God had a purpose. That in the middle of my meandering and my frustrations, God had a future. And I want to encourage you today, my friend, that God has a future for you. For I know the plans, says the Lord. I have plans for you. God's got plans for you, plans to give you hope plans to give you a future. If you believe that today, somebody give me some fire emojis today. Come on forward, church, Auckland, New Zealand. Somebody give me some uh, fire emojis. Come on. The future, Lord, the, the future is planned for you. The Lord has planned a future for you. And so this passage of Scripture, I want to share, I want to break this down a little bit because this passage of Scripture was a turning point for my life where for the first time I understood that even though I didn't have a plan, God had a plan. See, the, 
See, the true pursuit of a Christian journey, of a Christian life, of a believer's life, is not that we're trying to write our own plan. You don't have to write your own plan, my friend. And in fact, let me tell you this from experience. Any plan that you try to write outside of God will always be smaller than God's plan and will never be as fulfilling as God's plan. So don't, don't give your life. Don't believe what they say. You've just got to, you know, you just got to think of what you want to do and do it. No, 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 my friend. Don't, don't, don't ask people who didn't give you a plan what their plan is for your life. Ask God. Recently, I took my car in for a service. My car, there was an issue with it. And so I took my car to a mechanic. Uh, I went, in fact, to the actual dealership where I bought the car. I took the car to the mechanic at the dealership where I bought the car to fix what was wrong in the car. I didn't take my car to a dentist. I didn't take my car to a teacher. I didn't take my car to a lawyer. I took my car to a mechanic. Why? Because if there's something wrong in the car, then I go back to the people who know, who are involved in the design of it and who know how to fix it. My friend, when you are trying to discover God's plan and purpose for your life, don't look to other people. Don't look to other voices. Look to the Creator. Look to the God who created heaven and earth, who formed Adam out of dust and breathed life into him. If we want to know what our plan is, we go to the God who has a plan. And when we go to him, he gives us the plan. And my friend, in fact, even right now, I prophesy that God's downloading his plan right now to people who are watching. There are people right watching right now, and you're like, I don't even know what God's plan is for my life. Lift your hands right now. I believe right now God's going to speak to you. I declare by the Spirit of God that God's going to download His purpose to you. For I know the plans for you, declares the Lord. Plans to give you hope, plans to give you a future. God has got plans for your life. And when we understand, my friend, that God has a plan for our life, then our life is no longer disillusioned. Our life is is no longer a life of discouragement. Now our life is a life of excitement. Our life is a life of purpose. Our life is now a life of exhilaration because even though I'm, I may not know what's going on, there's somebody that knows what's going on. Come on, somebody in lockdown right now. Aren't you glad that even though you might not going on and, and we might not know what's going on, that God knows what's going on. Come on forward, Church Sydney right now. Come on forward, Church in Fiji right now. God knows what's going on and God is in control in the name of Jesus. And if you believe that today, give me some hands up emojis right now. God's in control. And so this passage goes, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Point number one is this, strength begins with God. My friend, true strength does not begin with self. True strength does not begin with us. True strength begins with God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And that Word became flesh. The joy of the Lord is our strength. My friend, sometimes the reason why we become weary, sometimes the reason why we become discouraged is because we're trying to find our strength in circumstance and trying to find our strength in understanding, trying to find our strength perhaps in people, trying to find our strength in ourselves. And can I encourage you, my friend, that all of those activities are ultimately futile because our strength must come from God. Our strength does not come from what is you know, temporal. Our strength comes from what is eternal. Our strength does not come from what is natural. Our strength comes from what is supernatural. True strength begins with God. He is the Alpha and He is the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. True strength begins with God. And as believers, one of the greatest sources of encouragement that we have is that is the end of the Bible. We know that God's at the beginning of the Bible. We know He's all the way through the Bible. And we also know that He's at the end of the Bible. And the reason that that's important is because we know how the story ends. My friend, we know that the 
devil is defeated. We know that God rises victorious over sin and death. We know that God has the ultimate say. So in the middle of all the things that are going on around you, can I encourage you, my friend, find your strength in God. Strength begins in God. Can I encourage you to do the first thing when you wake up in the morning? Don't wake up in the morning and turn to the turn to media, social media or news or any don't do anything else when you start your day. But start your day with God's word. One thing that Rutini and I started doing recently, probably in the last few months, is that you know we we actually made a decision to take our Bible, our paper Bible, and leave it open at the side of our, uh, of our bed. So that when you wake up in the morning, well, the Bible's already open. And can I tell you the number of uh, like increased scripture reading that happens because there's an open Bible? We've got Bibles all over our house. And, you know, like most people, they're stored on a shelf or, you know, they're on the table or, or you know, but they're closed. But just that one little act of opening, wow, I tell you what, all of a sudden our days began, began to be filled with faith in God's Word. Can I encourage you to do that? Strength begins with God. God has a plan. And truth is, friend, for every person who's watching, there's no person who's watching this who'd go, oh, I didn't know that. But so often we can forget the things that are so important to our lives. And I've discovered now I've been, I've been a Christian leader for over half my life and, and I've been preaching the gospel now for over 20, 20 years. And I've discovered now that my, my primary job is, or, or one of my jobs is not just to be a preacher and bring you know, new revelation out of God's Word, but one of my jobs as a preacher is to be a reminder, just to not necessarily preach new things, although obviously every time we preach out of the Bible, God always speaks new things. But you know what it is often? Oftentimes the new thing is the reminder of the old thing. The Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. My friend, even as I'm speaking that right now by faith, I believe right now someone's getting a hold of that word. And as you do, see, as you seek first the kingdom, all of these things have been added unto you. I declare right now, as people are seeking the kingdom of God, peace is being added to you. Right now, as you seek the kingdom of God, joy is being added to you. Right now, as you seek first the kingdom of God, right now, prosperity is coming to you. As you seek first the kingdom of God, faith, hope is coming to you right now in the name of Jesus. Strength begins with God. And the second thought today that I want to share with you as it pertains to being stronger in the Lord is to take the God-given steps. Take the God-given steps. The Bible says, it says it there, the steps of a, of a good person are ordered by the Lord. See, taking God-given steps means that we don't take self-made steps. It means that we're not pursuing my idea. I'm pursuing God's idea. In other words, I'm not trying to uh, pursue my strategy for my business or my strategy for my promotion. I'm asking God for His strategy. And can I honestly tell you every single time, I know business people in our church who before they make major business decisions, in fact, in fact all the time, they ask the Lord and they ask the Lord, Lord, what will you have me to do? And every time the Lord speaks to them and every time they speak on that, that idea is always way better than perhaps their own idea. Can I encourage you to take God-given steps. Notice it says that the steps of a good person. In other words, it implies the fact that there's a process. It implies that to walk in God's plan is going to be a journey. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be slower than what we think. Uh, anybody who's been, been walking with the Lord for any period of time, you know that everything that the Lord does it's not like the Lord is ever late, but it sure feels like it a lot of the time. He's always right on time. Is it possible that the Lord's not late, but the Lord is waiting for you to take the respective steps so that you can have what God's called you to have? See, it doesn't say the skips of a righteous person. So you can't skip your way to God's purpose. You can't skip your way to God's destination for you. 
You can't skip your way into blessing. You can't skip your way into prosperity. You can't skip your way into your future. The Bible says it's the step. And I I love the fact that even when we skip, because I've been known to skip many times in my life, because I, I, you know, when God speaks to me about something, I want to, I want, I want, I want to be there now. But oftentimes, what happens is that we take the skip, and then what happens is that the Lord that knows that we that we missed a step, and He knows that if we don't go back to the step that we skipped, then we're not going to be ready for the thing that He has for us. And so often time when we skip it, it's okay. God says, hey, listen, that's cool. Because God will just bring it back around again. You know, there's a person that comes up to you and then they always, let's say, let's say they, they sort of rub you the wrong way. And when you leave them, you always get angry. And then, you know, and then you ask God, God, I'm not just not going to hang out with that person. I'm not going to talk to them anymore. I'm going to avoid them in church, whatever it is. And the Lord says, hey, listen, that's okay. Because the issue wasn't with them. The issue is still with you. So that person goes away. And then another person comes to you and they rub you the wrong way. And then all of a sudden that thing comes up. And so what happens is that the Lord is not doing that to irritate you or the Lord's not doing that to take away from you. The Lord is doing that because He wants to make sure that you are taking the steps, the steps of a righteous person, not the skips of a righteous person. And notice it says the steps and not, not, not the stage of a righteous person. See, I know many people who would talk a good talk. In fact, I've heard many preachers who can preach. so They could preach the paint off the wall so good. They've got all these lines and when they speak, they're so eloquent and they're so wise and, and, and it just sounds so amazing. And then, you know, you dig behind, big, dig a little and you get behind the scenes and you realize that they're talking about things that actually aren't being displayed in their life. They're talking about things from a stage, but those things on the stage aren't being lived out behind the stage. That they're talking about themselves in such a way that 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 is actually not who they really are. And I want to encourage you that it's not about trying to be something that you are not. It's not the stage of a righteous person that the Lord orders. It's it's not about just having it all together. It's not about kind of you know you know pretending to be something that we're not. No, it's just simply about taking the steps. Listen, I, you know I may not be where I want to be yet. You may not be where you want to be yet, but we don't have to stand there and say, I'm there when I'm not there. No, let's come back to the steps because it's not the stage of a righteous person. It's the steps of a righteous person that are ordered by the Lord. And sometimes, in fact, what we've got to do, sometimes we've got to turn down that promotion. Sometimes we've got to turn down that pay increase. Sometimes we've got to turn down that job. Heck, sometimes we definitely have to turn down that relationship. You know, sometimes we, 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 we esteem those things that will put us on a stage. But can I encourage you that, that if you don't walk the steps before you get to the stage, then my friend, you'll never be able to handle it. You'll never be able to handle it. You'll never be able to handle blessing before it's time. I'm a father of three girls, beautiful girls. And, and uh, my oldest one already is asking me about uh, driving a car. Now I own a car. I've got the keys to the car. I put the petrol in the car. It's my car. And she's big enough to drive that car. She can reach the pedals. You know, she's, she's um, excited about it. She has the desire. She wants to do it. She wants to drive the car. But if I gave her something before she's ready, before she can handle it, then what will be a blessing to her when she's of legal age, what will be something that will help her and, and, and actually will, will come to her, if it comes to her too soon, it will be a curse instead of a blessing. And in fact, many parents know this, that parenting is not determined primarily by what you give to your kids. Parenting is largely determined by what you don't. It's not it's not about what you will do for them. It's about what you won't do for them yet. And so in fact, there, you would say, if, if, I, if I gave my 13-year-old daughter the keys to my car and let her drive, you would say of me that I'm a bad parent. And I would be a bad parent if I, if I gave her something that one, legally she wasn't able to do and also wasn't, uh, wasn't prepared to do so that it compromised her safety. I would be a bad parent. 
So therefore, a definition, one definition of good parenting is what you withhold. Can I encourage you today that your Father in heaven is a good, good God? That your Father in heaven loves you. Your Father in heaven loves you and wants, wants the best for you. And that's why sometimes the best for you is not no, just not yet. It will be a blessing to you when it comes at the right time. My friend, can I encourage you? Take the God-given steps. Don't step to the right or left or right, but stay on course with God's steps. Take the steps. Every person right now, God's been speaking to you about the steps. There are many people who are saying, what do I do? What do I do? My friend, can I encourage you? Go back to doing the thing that the Lord has already asked you to do. Take the next step. Take your God-given step. Take it. Take it in God. My friend, if you're watching today and if you don't know Jesus, if you're not right with God, then I'd love to pray with you today. And today is the day. I believe today is the day where if you're distant from God, you've walked away from God, it doesn't matter how you drifted from God. Maybe you've never known God. Today is your day to get right with God. And the Bible promises us that everyone, every single person who calls on His name shall be saved. It doesn't matter whether you're old or young, whether you're a boy, whether you're a girl, doesn't matter whether you're white, whether you're colored, whatever it is, my friend, it doesn't matter whether you live, it doesn't matter, matter whether you live in public housing or whether you live in a mansion. God saves everyone. Somebody shout everyone, everyone who calls on His name. And my friend today, if you would call on that name, then I promise you this, in a moment we're about to pray a prayer. And as you, as you pray this prayer, the Lord is going to step out of eternity and into your life. If that's you, friend, you're saying, preach, include me in that prayer. I want to be included. Then if that's you, when I count to three, if that's you, click that link, type yes, or, uh, or uh, go to the website. We'll give you that information because we want to help you. We want to help you make this decision. We want to help you take the next steps in God. So if that's you, friend, wherever you are, when I count to three, type yes, click that link. One, you don't know Jesus. Two, you're not right with God. You're distant from God. If that's you, friend. Three, respond to Jesus. You're not responding to me. You're responding to Christ. Thank you that you do. Thank you, Lord, for all of those people right now who are responding to Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer. If you, if you, if you responded, uh, I want you to pray this prayer. Maybe you're in a room full of people. I want you to pray this prayer out loud. Pray this prayer from your heart. The Bible calls that faith. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me so much. You died on the cross and rose again to forgive me of my sin. From today on, I'm living for you. I give you my whole heart. I give you my whole life. I'm holding on to you because you always held on to me. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody said, Amen. Father, bless these people who prayed this prayer. Thank you for every every son and every daughter who's coming home. I thank you for your blessing upon them. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Old is gone and new has come. Amen. Amen. Well, church, I want to thank you so much. Thank you for watching today. I want to thank you for your incredible generosity. Uh, your generosity, your faithfulness to God and tithes and offerings is literally changing lives. I want to thank you so much for all that you're doing. I want a big shout out to all our, uh, the whole bunch of uh, people watching from uh, Townsville right now. A big shout out to you. And uh, so glad that you could join us uh, today. Wherever you're watching, I want to thank you for joining us today. And I want to encourage you, if this has been of any blessing to you, I want to encourage you to go and share it get the word out and that'll be absolutely amazing and a couple of things I quickly want to encourage you around and that is that if, if you're not part of, of a family group we'd love to help you find one family groups are the heartbeat of a church and, and life is not designed to be done alone uh, we know that actually because more so during COVID and during the lockdown that one of the, one of the uh, epidemics is not just the vaccine but isolation and, and God doesn't want you to live in isolation it is not good for man to be alone and so I want to encourage you, we've got groups for every age, every stage, every location. We've got online groups, so you can join a group, be part of a group. We'd love to help you do that. You can go to our website right now. And also encourage you to invite a friend next week. Think about who you can invite. And you know, the easiest way you can invite a friend, especially online, is just share the link. You know, just if it's been, a, if it's been helpful to you, and I pray it has been helpful to you, but if it has been helpful to you, I believe it'll be of help to somebody else. 
So take it, share it, and that would be so incredibly helpful. And we're so thankful for you. Let me pray for you today. Father, I just pray your blessing upon every person. I'm thanking you, Lord God, that our strength is found in you and in the power of your mind. I'm thanking you for strength coming over people right now. Lord God, I'm thanking you for, for joy coming over those who are weary. I'm thanking you, Lord, for peace coming over those who are anxious. I'm thanking you, Lord God, for your strength right now to be made manifest in people's lives, in your church. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you join us next week. See you soon. God bless you.